Let's take the unit eight test. Here we go, black and white photography. Scroll down to the bottom and right click and open that link in a new window. Then resize your window. Come back to your original window and click on the unit introduction, black and white photography, and resize that window. And let's read the first question. It says, in black and white photography, we don't talk about colors. We talk about wavelengths, angstroms, tones, or shades. Black and white images have always been a part of photography. In fact, before 1942, almost all photography was done in black and white. There were some early color films, but these were expensive and generally limited to professional use. Even when color photography exploded in the mid-1950s, many photographers preferred black and white. Some thought they had more control over the image. Some thought it was more artistic. Some were just stubborn. But over the years, the use of black and white decreased until only fine art photographers used it. While newspapers and magazines still print, print photographs in black and white, they are all shot in digital color. This trend may be reversing, however. The digital darkroom continues to improve. Digital cameras continue to improve. With all of this, there seems to be a slowly growing interest in black and white again. learn black and white photography. It's somehow the same but different. Many photographers who still use black and white film say that digital black and white images don't look the same. And they're right. But with all of the control the digital darkroom gives photographers, we are seeing an evolution in the black and white image. Black and white never has been about just black and white. It's about all of those gray tones in between. Black and white is about pure light. We don't have to worry about all of those problematic colors. We don't have to worry about those pesky color casts. But more than that, black and white lets us look at our subject in a new way. We remove the subject from the effects color has on our view. This forces us to concentrate on the subject and only the subject. Objectives. Explain how a black and white image differs from a color image. Apply various software tools to convert digital color, color image to black and white. Apply various software tools for processing a digital black and white image. Street photography. Let's take a look at the challenging and exciting story of street photography. Street photography. It's in the work of photographers like Eugene Atget, who photographed the streets of Paris in the 1890s and early 1900s, documenting the lives of average people in the environment of the city. A number of photographers followed, including August Sander, a German photographer, and Americans Louis Hine and Jacob Rees. This tradition led to works by such American photographers as Lee Friedlander and Gary Winogrand, each adding their own perspective and interests to this tradition. But whatever they're interested in, the common thread in street photography is the city or town and the people. And because every street photographer has his or her own idea of what this area of photography is all about, trying to define it is almost impossible. Some photographers are interested in the details of the environment around them, the little details that seemingly go unnoticed or taken for granted. Some are interested in portraying the environment of the city in terms of mountains, plains, rivers, and streams, taking the approach of a landscape photographer. Some are interested in exploring the relationship between the people and the environment of the city. And some are interested in the decline and rebirth of certain areas. But whatever their approach, their overriding interest is the environment of the city, town, or village, and its people. Street photography is a very active pursuit. Most street photographers are walking around their area of interest. 
They are looking intently for any scene that presents itself, and they have to be able to react quickly. Some of those scenes may last for only a few seconds. Street photography has traditionally been done in black and white. While this is changing a bit, some photographers will take their color images and process them into black and white. Street photographers prefer to travel light, keeping their equipment to a minimum. The less gear they have to worry about, the more they can concentrate on the scenes as they present themselves. Tones versus colors. We don't talk about colors in a black and white image. We talk about tones. I think that was the answer to the first question. In black and white photography, we don't talk about colors. We talk about tones. Question two. The darkest tone in black and white photography is pure black, monitor black, black, or light black. The darkest tone is pure black. Next question. The lightest tone in black and white photography, the lightest tone is pure white. The tones separating the darkest and lightest in black and white photography are intermediates, connectives, tints of gray, or shades of gray. Let's see. Between the darkest and lightest tones are a whole range of gray tones. Hmm. When you photograph in black and white, each color you see in the scene is converted into a gray tone. This is based solely on how much light is reflected by the object. The color chart shows the 216 colors that are considered web safe. The other chart is the same, only converted to black and white. The differences between the color samples in the color version of the chart are immediately obvious. Those same differences in the black and white version are much more subtle. Several different colors can produce tones that are very similar. This subtleness is part of the appeal of black and white. The question is how to get a digital black and white image. Let's see that question again. The tones separating the darkest and lightest in black and white photography are intermediates, connectives, tints of gray, or shades of gray. Hmm, I would have said gray tones, but let's keep going and hopefully the answer is going to pop out. Creating black and white images. There are two ways to create a black and white image. Many digital cameras offer a black and white mode. This mode simply strips all of the chroma or color information from the image. The advantage here is that you have a true black and white image. The disadvantage is that if you ever need a color version of that image, you're out of luck. For those whose cameras have an electronic viewfinder, the other advantage of using black and white mode is that the viewfinder displays black and white rather than color. The second way to create a black and white digital image is in your photo processing software. There are several tools in most software you can use to process a color image into black and white. The peacock image was converted from digital color to black and white in GIMP. Thinking in black and white. We see the world in color. When we photograph in color, we use all of those colors to help define the objects in our images. In many ways, color can become a crutch. Black and white photography is more demanding of our ability to evaluate the scene we are photographing. In black and white, we must be more conscious of the structure of the scene than of the colors. We must be more aware of the shapes and textures in the scene. We must also be more aware of the relationship of the tones. We also must be more aware of the light we are using. In black and white photography, the shadows play a much greater role. They give the image depth. It is very important to be photographing at an angle to the light rather than using straight front lighting or straight side lighting. Okay, I think we're getting into it and we haven't come to the answer. The tones separating the darkest and lightest in black and white photo photography are, we're gonna go with shades of gray. Shades of gray. Number five, one of the ways to create digital black and white image is grayscale scanning, converting a color image and processing software. Mm, ding. 
re-photographing an existing image or tone sampling. Nope, it's going to be using that software, your GIMP, to convert it to black and white. In black and white, we must be more conscious of image structure. All right, here we go. Subjects for black and white. There are a few subjects that don't work well in black and white. One of those might be a clear sky, sunset with all of the colors, but almost everything else works in black and white. There are also a number of subjects that are traditional subjects for black and white. These include landscape photography. By removing the color from the scene, the photographer concentrates on the form of the land. Street photography. By removing the color, the street photographer concentrates on the structure around him or her. Portrait photography. Black and white portraits have a timeless quality. Self-check. Black and white photography is concerned with, I'm going to say tones, or it could be subtlety. Hmm. Let's see. The darkest tone in black and white photography is pure black. The lighter tones in a black and white image are called highlights. A traditional subject of black and white photography could be a landscape and a quality of black and white that attracts many photographers is the subtlety. Let's see if that's right. Woohoo! Processing black and white. There are two approaches to processing digital color images into black and white. The first is to simply desaturate the image. This uses the saturation control of the hue and saturation tool in GIMP. To make the image black and white, simply desaturate it to zero. All of the color will be reduced to the appropriate gray tone. While this is an easy way to make an image black and white, it is not the better way. The better way to process an image from digital color to black and white is to apply the grayscale mode. To use this mode, go to the image menu on your camera and select mode. From the menu, click on grayscale and your image will be converted. The grayscale mode actually blends the three channels together into a black and white output. But the channels are not blended equally. A bit more of the red channel is used. But there is more you have to do to have a good black and white image. Set the contrast. The first thing you will notice after converting your image to grayscale is that there's not enough contrast and your image looks foggy, or I like to say kind of washed out and flat. Contrast is the difference between light and dark areas of the image. To correct this, you will need to adjust both the brightness and the contrast. This next image has 23 plus units of contrast and extra four units of brightness. Looks much better to see the pop there, the pure blacks under the wing, the pure whites on the face rather than just grays. When you are setting the contrast and brightness, there needs to be a balance. Notice in the adjusted image that you can see the detail in the shadows and in the highlights. Let's see if we've gotten to. Using shadows in a black and white image tends to, adds to the visual basis of the image, the camera overcast layer, its depth, its transfer function. Hmm. Let's see. Saving your black and whites. Whenever you work on an image, it should be a copy of the original you archived. You don't want to take the chance of overwriting the original image by accident. It is very easy to pull down the file menu and simply click save. The problem is doing that will overwrite the original. You always want to save the image you worked with, worked on with a different name. Clicking on save as will open the window that will allow you to enter a new file name. When you click on the save button after entering the new file name, you'll see the save as JPEG window open. Make sure the quality slider is set to 100%. This will make sure that your image will be saved with the highest quality possible. You can really ignore everything else and click save. Your image will be saved with the new file name. Let's review what we've learned. The darkest tone in black and white photography is pure black. One of the ways to create a digital black and white image is converting a color image and processing software. 
In black and white, we must be more conscious of image structure. Which channel is used a bit more when converting to grayscale mode? Red. In black and white photography, we don't talk about colors, we talk about tones. <laughs> don't go too fast. The lightest tone in black and white photography is pure white. Using shadows in a black and white image tends to, adds to, hmm, I'm going to say it's depth. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, good, because I don't remember reading that, but here we go. It's depth, number seven. Uh, the best use of light in black and white photography is shooting across the light at an angle to combine front and side lighting. Yes, that was the answer. Yep. Mm hmm. The best use of light in black and white photography is shooting across the light at an angle to combine front and side lighting. Let's see. One approach to creating a black and white photograph is to convert to grayscale mode. That's true. And the brightness and contrast tool, the brightness control, makes the image darker or lighter. It makes the midtone values darker or lighter. I'm going to say both B. Wait, is a good tool for correcting over or under exposure. Hmm. I'll go with both B and C. No. Makes the image darker or lighter. That's the correct answer. Makes the image darker or lighter. That's bright the brightness. Brightness. Okay. Perfect. All right. The best approach to making images a different size. All right, we haven't gotten there. After converting to black and white, you normally have to adjust brightness and contrast. When saving your image as a JPEG, make sure the quality slider is set to 100%. The tones separating the darkest and lightest in black and white photography are called shades of gray, I hope. Let's see, yes, okay. One approach to creating a black and white photograph is to convert to grayscale mode. All right, perfect. Phew. Oh, and there's the test. Okay, perfect. So there's a couple on here we still need to answer. The best approach to making images a different size is, I'm a little bit surprised. I, I don't remember talking about this in here, um, but I would say, Scaling. When you're in GIMP, you're going to go to image, scale image to change the size of it. So scaling. The aspect ratio is the ratio of the image width to height. But is it just me? I don't remember there being a part that talked about those things. <laughs> All right, good job. Save your responses and click submit.